Welcome to the Spring Fever Garden Forums, where we connect you, the gardener, to the experts at North Dakota State University. My name is Tom Kolb, and I'm an extension horticulturist in the Department of Plant Sciences. This is the second of our four forums, and tonight our theme is landscapes. And I think it's always fun to learn about what's new at our garden centers and nurseries. And here to tell us about some new trees and shrubs is Dr. Todd West. Todd's a professor at North Dakota State University, and he's our director of our Woody Plant Improvement Program. He earned his PhD from Southern Illinois University at Carbondale. The NDSU Woody Plant Improvement Program focuses on the development of new woody cultivars that are suited for USDA hardening zones three and four. A few of Todd's favorite things are spending time with his family and wandering around and get lost in arboretums and he likes old cars too. So Todd, welcome to the forums. So we're gonna be a little bit biased tonight. We're gonna to talk about some new NDSU stuff that's available. We're also gonna talk about non-NDSU stuff. All right, so we have it broken down kind of by species. This one uh, is just a little bit out of place, but this is our newest introduction. <clears throat> it's called Highland Guard Mountain Pine. Many of you are probably familiar with Tannenbaum, Mugo Pine. This one is Tannenbaum on steroids. And so instead of being that 15 to 18 foot, it's gonna get 30 to 40 foot. Uh, the picture of the parent tree is on the left. And what is typical of Pinus sonsonata is what you see there in that center picture where I'm standing by, where they tend to be really wide uh, and not that really nice uh, broad or that nice tight upright. So really excited about this one. Uh, it will be available next season. So not this year, but it'll be available next year. And so it is uh, going to be available through Oregon Pride Nurseries. So they deliver all throughout our region here. Uh, and so if you really want that nice vertical accent, you know, one thing that happened this summer for us, you know, when we went into the severe drought is that the arborvitae really got hit hard uh, because they need that more moisture. Whereas then the mugos actually did fairly well. <clears throat> and, and so Ensenada is a close relative and it performed very well even during drought. So here's just some of the production photos. Uh, again, uh, they're loving the way this plant looks, loving the way it's growing. So this one will be in your garden center here soon. Now, speaking of arborvitae, there's a new one called North Pole. And Art Bow, who was associated with NDSU, he made this selection and it's 15 foot by five foot. So it's much more narrow than emerald green, super hardy, obviously it was selected out of Minnesota, uh, resistant to winter burn more tolerant, uh, well, it's tolerant to wet soil, but again, the biggest, two big issues is drought and then deer. But a really nice, beautiful form. Uh, picture on the left, you can see a nice cluster of them. Uh, so it would make a very good screen. Birch, there, we have several new birch out, which I'm really excited about. This is one of my favorite trees. If you've ever visited during our field days in August out at Absaraca, you've definitely seen this tree. Uh, but it's now readily available. And so this is Cinnamon Curls Dwarf Korean Birch. And it doesn't get any bigger than nine foot. It's a kind of a close relative to river birch. So it's resistant to the bronze birch borer. Also very drought tolerant for a birch. Uh, and has performed really well. Beautiful golden fall color. Uh, no problem with leaf scorch and drought. Uh, the picture on the left is what the species should be. And it should be about a 25 to 30 foot tree, whereas this one is a true dwarf. Uh, it's available with Isley Nursery. They have been growing it out. They now have it in uh, number threes, uh, three gallon pots, and also six gallon pots for a much larger tree. I think the six gallon is retailing for about 250 to $300. So it's not a cheap tree, but it is a specimen tree. So you would expect to pay a little bit more for a specimen. Then we have another new one. This is the Tianchen birch, Emerald Flare. Uh, I consider this to be an improved genetics on Dakota Pinnacle. Dakota Pinnacle has had some problems. Uh, this one I think is a much better tree. And, and so it has this very similar form to if you're familiar with Dakota Pinnacle, but it, this is a white bark birch, as you can see in the picture on the left. What I like about it though, is that it still maintains a little bit more peel. Uh, it's not, super peely like a paper birch, but it still has a peel, unlike where the Dakota Pinnacle becomes static because it's an Asian white birch. Uh, all birch are produced in tissue culture. 
Um, we, what's really exciting about it though, the, the nursery growers really like it because it grows really fast in compared to some of the others. Now, Northern Tribute River Birch is not a new one for our program. It's actually been around uh, for quite a while. 2017, it was finally available through Heritage, but now it's becoming much more available in the nursery trade. I saw quite a few of them at the garden centers here in Fargo and Bismarck. And so now this is a time when you actually can really get it. So it's one I would highly recommend, not a new plant, but kind of new, newly available, um, but uh, drought tolerant, pH tolerant, and, and really hardy. It's a beautiful tree. I mean, look at that bark. You can't go wrong with, with bark. Uh, and beautiful foliage, no pH problems with the chlorosis, which we typically see with river birch. Uh, buckeye, lava burst buckeye. Again, we're hitting NDSU pretty hard, but I will get into some others. This is the first and only buckeye that's been selected on form. <clears throat> it's a more of a narrow upright, uh, leaf scorch resistant, and uh, has smaller seeds and less seeds, but beautiful, beautiful fall color. Uh, I love this picture, the, the sequence here. On the left is the first year planting, the center is the second year planting. And you can just see how much of a pole it kind of is. It's just so narrow and upright. And there you can see the color on the right. Uh, early glow buckeyes. Now this is not an NDSU release. Uh, this is out of Johnson's Nursery with Mike Canny. <clears throat> and another really nice uh, buckeye. And so you, you'll be seeing this in the garden centers. Um, and it is nearly seedless as well. So it's nice because buckeye, the seeds are considered to be poisonous and, and with having less seed, then there's less worry. But beautiful foliage in the summer and beautiful fall color and leaf scorch resistant as well. Coffee tree, coffee tree are getting to be very popular because there's not a lot of disease issues with them. Uh, but there's a new one called Skinny Latte. Now it's going to be a big tree. It's going to be up to 50 foot. Here's the tree on the right. This is actually out of the Morton Arboretum. Uh, it is seedless, so it's a male, so you won't have those big chunky pods, um, but a nice vertical accent. So if you have a limited space or if you want to have a nice deciduous screen, you could plant them fairly close together. And, and just a really nice selection. So this one's uh, going to be available and you'll see this at the garden centers. And this is how it differs. If you look on the left, you can see the standard coffee tree, which is typically 40 foot wide, whereas skinny latte is only about 18 foot wide. So it fits on boulevards much better and uh, in tighter landscapes. Uh, crab apples, everybody loves uh, spring snow. I hate it uh, because it has so many disease problems. You know, it is fruitless, but well, that, that takes away some of the great ornamental qualities of a crab apple. So this is a new one called Snow Crystal. It is a compact form. It kind of has that gumdrop shape that you see with Little Leaf Linden, but it's only 15 foot by 12 foot. White flowers, just like spring snow, but you get this yellow to golden orange fruits and, and goes all the way into the winter months. Just absolutely gorgeous. Uh, so this is a new one that you'll see. And what's great about it is it has excellent resistance to apple scab, fire blight, cedar apple rust, and mildew, whereas spring snow does not. So here's kind of the sequence from flower to fruit. Absolutely gorgeous. This is available through J. Frank Schmidt. And again, they deliver throughout our entire region. So this is one that you'll be seeing at the garden centers. Elm, back to NDSU, Northern Empress, Japanese elm. This is now available. Uh, and hitting the garden centers this year as well. Currently Bailey's is the only producer, but we have numerous producers that are following right on their heels. So they'll be available next year in even greater quantities. Um, but all the nurseries are scrambling to try to get this plant because it's so, so wonderful. Uh, what's wonderful about it is that it has burgundy fall color and it's nearly seedless. We compared it to another elm where uh, Vanguard, where it had 4,200 seeds in about a two foot section, whereas the Northern Empress only had 20. So clean up all those horrible seeds that you have to clean up from elms. You won't be doing that with Northern Empress. Uh, Greenstone Elm, this is also another one. This is also a Japanese elm. Both of these are Japanese elms that so are resistant to Dutch elm disease. This is gonna be a big tree though, 60 foot by 40 foot. It will have kind of that green yellow fall color, not as nice as Northern Empress but DED tolerant and just absolutely great grower. Very nice, strong branch angles and beautiful foliage uh, during the growing season. There's a new silver maple out. <clears throat> it's called Symmetry. 
And this was collected from a witch's broom out of, out of Wisconsin. And I'm from Wisconsin. I spelled, I didn't misspelled Wisconsin. All right, way to go. Uh, but it's a unique compact growth habit. And so you're looking at about a 30 foot by 20 foot, kind of this nice little uh, rounded oval. We haven't evaluated yet. They're saying hardy zone three. I don't know. I would say maybe for sure zone four, but be careful zone three. We don't know yet. Um, you go pine. I mentioned Tannenbaum earlier. This one is Highland Splendor. This one's now available in the nursery trade. This is an improved genetics upon Tannenbaum. Oregon Pride was growing this. They were evaluating it and they love it better than Tannenbaum. So they're dropping Tannenbaum from all production and they're only growing now Highland Splendor. Uh, it has a nicer, darker green color, kind of an army green. And it actually grows 20% faster, which is not a lot, but for a mugo pine, mugo pines are one of the slowest growing pines there are. And so anytime we can improve upon growth rate, it's a win-win for the nurseries, but also us in the landscape because we wanted to get to size faster. Red buds, again, another one that is not new, but new, newly a, a much more available. I saw it for the first time in Fargo. Uh, available in the garden centers this last season. So hopefully be much more readily available now. Uh, this is Northern Herald Red Bud. And so uh, J. Frank Schmidt says 3B. It, it will be 3B, but you'll probably get a little bit of dieback. This is a solid 4A, um, but beautiful, beautiful flowers in the spring and some of the thickest leaves of all of the cultivars of Red Bud. Thornless honey locust. This is a new one. Greg uh, Morganson, who is uh, retired from NDSU, uh, from our research specialist from my program, uh, he selected this one and it's available through J. Frank Schmidt. This is not an NDSU release. This is a J. Frank Schmidt in conjunction with George, uh, with, George with Greg Morganson. Uh, it's called Northern Sentinel. And so again, an another nice, upright, more narrow habit than what's typical of honey locust, which generally gets a little bit wider. And so much better choice than for a boulevard, but also those tighter landscapes, you know, similar to that skinny latte for the coffee tree. Uh, otherwise, everything else about it is going to be the same. Uh, it is a male, so it will be nearly seedless. You know, they do sometimes throw a little bit of seed, but a really nice selection of the honey locust. Uh, some shrubs. So aronia. There are quite a few cultivars that have been coming out lately. Uh, we have uh, the Brilliantissima, the Groundhug, Lowscape Hedger, Lowscape Mound, Lowscape Snowfire. Uh, here's just a picture uh, from Spring Meadow showing Viking, which is kind of the standard that was used for uh, fruit production and seeing what Lowscape Mound can do. So now these are not necessarily new to the market, but they're becoming much more common. Uh, Groundhug, you know, is no more than 14 inches tall. I love aronia because you get that red fall, uh, fall color, dark purple berries, they're deer resistant, rain garden, so which is really important because then they can handle it really wet, but they can also handle it really dry and they're pollinator friendly. So here you have this really nice ground cover. Uh, low scape hedger, uh, again, just a little bit bigger, now three to five foot, so you can get into kind of a, a small hedge and you still get that beautiful fall color, just a really nice clean plant. Low scape snow fire is the heaviest bloomer and heaviest fruit set. So if you're looking for a lot of bloom and a lot of fruit, this is the one I would use. It's uh, not three to 54 feet. Oh my goodness. About three to five feet by three to four feet. Um, but really nice plant, especially if you want that uh, aronia berry, uh, which is really healthy. It doesn't taste that amazing, but it's definitely healthy. Makes great smoothies, super high in antioxidants, but beautiful plant. Azaleas, uh, fire flare orange. This one I snuck in. I really shouldn't because this won't be available till next year. Um, but we have a producer now. And so it's being produced in tissue culture out in uh, Washington. And we have several nurseries that are receiving liners this year, which they'll grow out. So it should be available next year, but pH tolerant and also uh, clay tolerant and hardy zone three. Uh, whereas we have the issues with um, the Northern Light series not being completely hardy and they really are iffy on our pH as well. This does extremely well. So just absolutely beautiful plant. Uh, hydrangeas, there's a million new hydrangeas every year. So it's hard to keep track of them. Um, I like this one, Berry White. 
Uh, and you know, it's pretty standard for a panicle hydrangea, but it has really nice, strong, upright stems. So you, you're not gonna get a lot of the drooping. Uh, it does start out white and then progress to a dark pink. Uh, and this is out of first editions with Bailey's. Little Lime Punch, uh, again, out of Spring Meadow. So you can see what the plant will look like there. Three to five foot, and it's similar to Little Lime. Uh, so you emerge lime green blooms, but it differs as the flowers age to pink instead. So really neat little, uh, little plant. So here you can see then the color of what it's gonna do. So very different from Little Lime. So I'm excited about this one. I love this name, Puffer Fish. And this is also a panicle. Uh, it's more puffed up, uh, uh, more of a puffed up bobo. Uh, nice white blooms. And then the, as the blooms age, they turn to lime green, but then they have this little bit of a surprise, a fresh sprig, sprig of white flowers emerge from the tip of the panicle. So you can see that on the right. So you have the, the typical panicle, as you can see on the left, but then when it's done, it throws this little bit of a tuft, uh, which is kind of interesting. Lilacs, um, pink teeny is a Preston lilac. So this is out of Jeffrey's nursery. Uh, and it's a more tidier, compact version than Miss Canada. And, and a lot of us are very familiar with Miss Canada, pretty big, 10 foot by eight foot. This is four to five by four. This was new in 2020, um, but now you, know, you definitely should be able to find this available in your garden center. Just beautiful color. So just, you know, think of it as a nice improved version. Uh, roses, there's, there's a handful of new roses that, uh, with the Oh So Easy uh, series. So Oh So Easy Italian Ice. Just beautiful color, you know, just absolutely fabulous. Hardy Zone 4. Uh, then there's also Easy Urban Legend. Uh, and so, again, just a really nice color uh, for a rose. And then Oso oh Easy Peasy. So three new Oso oh Easy uh, roses that we can add to our landscape. Service Berry. If you notice a theme, we have a theme of everything kind of being upright. That's kind of the what everybody's looking for is in these smaller landscapes that we have to be able to fit things in uh, better and tighter. We're lo always looking for these uprights. Um, and so uh, really great called Standing Ovation, the cultivar is Obelisk, and also for uh, Etiscaping. You know, if you want to get into uh, that, it's nice to have plants that will also be beautiful, but also provide us with some wonderful fruit. Unfortunately though, you're gonna to have to fight the birds. And that's one hard thing is that you would want to then net it and it may not look that great then in the landscape, but a nice uh, orange red fall color. So here you can see in, in bloom. Spirea, kind of like hydrangeas, there's always a million new ones. This is double play candy corn. <clears throat> new growth emerges a bright candy apple red. As it matures, it turns kind of a pineapple yellow. And then uh, new growth continues to emerge bright orange all season. Uh, so nice, nice color to add into our palette. So there you can see the new growth on the left. Flowers are gonna be that deeper magenta. Then we have pink sparkler. This is a birch leaf spirea and blooms large round pink flowers, heads at the tips of stems, and then reblooms in, uh, in fall. So this is a rebloomer. And it will bloom uh, all up and down the, the stems of the leaf axis. And then you get burgundy fall color. So look at that, that fall color. It's just absolutely fabulous. Great for a spirea. Viburnum. There are some new viburnums out there. So this is an arrowwood viburnum called All That Glitters. And they were selected for their glossy foliage. Now this picture doesn't really show it well, but you will have the standard blue fruit, but you get this super glossy foliage, almost like somebody has polished the leaves. And then, uh, so there's all that glitters and then all that glows. And, and so this is a little bit shorter uh, version, um, but again, just has this really clean foliage. And here you can see a close up of the foliage. I mean, it looks like somebody has actually polished it. And so you get that really nice brightening in the landscape with that uh, glossy foliage. Then Willow, this is one that I love. It's been out for a while, um, but it, you see it much more now available in, in the garden centers. It's Iceberg Alley. I fell in love with this when I saw it up at Jeffrey's Nursery uh, several years ago, but five foot by uh, five to six foot by five to six foot. And there's just beautiful silver foliage. And this is available now through first editions with Bailey's. It's also pollinator friendly. 
And it has those really nice silver catkins that come out. So everything about it is silver. It just really brightens up your landscape. And that is my new plants that are coming to your uh, garden center this year. Okay, thanks, Todd. Wow, that was a lot of a lot of fascinating plants you got there. Okay, let's talk about, let's go with the questions here. Um, how about, you were talking about hydrangeas and, and you mentioned the word panicle. Can you define what that means? Yeah, that's a great question because you have different panicle or different hydrangeas. And so we typically, what we're planting are the smooth hydrangeas and the panicle hydrangeas. And they call that because the flower shape uh, is a panicle. And that means it's just a cluster of flowers that are kind of cone shaped, uh, kind of terminating into a, like almost like a single, single flower. So that's where the panicle hydrangea comes from. It's, it's just the form. It's kind of a cone-shaped flower. Okay, Todd, you know, you got so many beautiful shrubs. So this guy decided, I'm going to tear out my old shrub. <laughs> How long do I have to wait before I plant something else in that planting hole? Well, for really anything, as long as you uh, dig it out and you have a clean dig, so nothing is left behind, uh, you shouldn't have any problems. You know, I'd work up the soil really well, you know amend it maybe a little bit and you should be ready to go right back in. Okay. Are Buckeyes tolerant of drought? Buckeyes. Now Buckeyes, they're not overly tolerant of drought as a species. And so one of the issues that we see is that when you use species, you get a lot of that leaf scorch and then they'll do early leaf drop because they're, they're shutting down because they need to preserve themselves. That's why you always want to make sure that you select a cultivar because the cultivars are much more drought tolerant. I still, you know, you need to be careful with them, um, but they're much more tolerant to that. So always stick with the cultivars. I would not suggest the species, but it's best to always keep them in a spot where it's going to be a little bit low, where there would be water. And then obviously if we go into heavy drought uh, with any tree, you want to make sure that you watch the moisture level. Uh, speaking of drought tolerant, how do junipers do here with our cold temperatures and dry conditions? I, I didn't mention any junipers. Um, there's not a lot of necessarily new junipers coming out, but there's a lot of great junipers. And that's the flip side, whereas arborvitae are not drought tolerant, but junipers are. Uh, if you go out mm -hmm. west to our badlands, our wonderful badlands in North Dakota, and a lot of the trees that you're going to see out there are all junipers. How about aronia? What kind of soil does that like? Uh, aronia, I mean, every plant loves a well-drained soil, but aronia can also ha handle a heavy clay soil as well. They're very adaptable plants. Yep. Okay, what do you think about these aus trees? These, oh, these hybrid trees from Australia, these quick-growing trees. Oh, trees, well... I, my only issue with a fast growing tree, and when I teach our landscape plant materials, it's the mantra that we use is right plant, right place. Every tree has the correct spot. Now with fast growing trees, the other thing my students learn is that there's two things associated with fast growing, short lived, weak wood. And so you just need to be careful where you put them. And those fast growing trees, depending on your age, they may be uh, the one tree that you will plant and cut down in your lifetime. Yeah, it's a great tree for a home landscape if you plan on moving in about 10 years. Yes, amen. And then the next person has to cut it down. And they have to pay the $600 to get it cut down. Right. Um, when you say cultivar, what does that mean? So a cultivar, what that is, is that it is a selected variety. So like with aronia, aronia has a typical normal size for the species, which is much larger than these new cultivars. So a cultivar is just a plant that has been selected for a specific trait, whether it's size, whether it's flower color, you know, like we talked about those three different roses, you saw there was three different colors. So they've been selected for a specific trait that is maintained clonally uh, with reproduction. Okay. This person has a mugo pine that has some white scale on it. Oh, Do you know what that man. is? Yeah. So mugo, that is one of the most uh, common issues with mugo pine is that they will get a pine scale. Uh, you can clean it up. There are some systemics that you can do. There's also some dormant oils you have to wait. So it's a scale insect. And what it does is that it protects itself. 
And, and when uh, in the later spring, early summer, they have what's called the crawler stage. That's when the insect really isn't protected anymore. And you can do a dormant oil that will suffocate them. Um, and that's really the best time to control them is when they're in that crawler stage, late spring, early summer. If you wait any longer, they get that scale, that hard, that white part, and then they're kind of protected again. So in the crawler stage, like a summer oil would be the way to go? Yeah. Okay. How about, uh, what zone is it on the border with Canada? What so hardiness you, zone? You are unfortunately in a zone three. Yeah. It's Okay. So focus on those zone three plants. It'd be worse. Luckily, you're not living in Saskatchewan. Hopefully nobody <laughs> from Saskatchewan's here. How about, uh, is there a good nanny berry tree cultivar that doesn't sucker? Oh, that would be wonderful, wouldn't it? <laughs> okay, that's your next project, Todd. Yeah. About, uh, is there a good shrub for the north side of a building along the foundation? Well, it just kind of really depends on what you're going for. Um, you know, there is the microbiota, the uh, Russian uh, brain fart. Um, arborvitae, Russian arborvitae. Uh, it doesn't get really tall, uh, but it can handle full shade. Um, How about a Japanese U on the north yeah, side? Yeah, that, that actually would be a great, you know, it's, it's not that exciting, but there, that's definitely one that would handle full shade. You know, full, that full shade is a hard, hard spot to put things. Yeah, especially for evergreens, huh? Especially Got a few choices with uh, leafy types. Um, I have a fairly established tree that I'd like to move without just cutting down and killing. Any idea where, where I could rent or who would have a tree spade? Just yeah, that's, gotta, getting, that's yeah. getting harder and harder. There are companies that will do it. Um, depending on just where you're located. Uh, so you just have to reach out to the different nurseries and, and just do some kind of calling around to see. But with larger trees, uh, they don't generally, uh, well, not recommend, but they don't uh, ensure that, I don't know what I'm trying to say. Um, they don't guarantee. They don't guarantee that it's going to survive. Yeah, because you take out so much of, that of, of its feeding roots. You know? Exactly. How about uh, if, if I have a shrub that's fast growing, does that mean it has short roots and will blow over easily? No, uh, with, with shrubs and trees, the fast growing, really it comes down to it's that just short lived weak wood. That's more for a tree because a lot of the shrubs are fast growing anyway. Um, you know, they don't have a super extensive root system, but, but even so though with trees, you know, that, that doesn't necessarily hold true. Okay, how about, uh, are you really telling the truth about those azaleas being pH tolerant? Come on, that's an right. acid plant, man. Is know, that going to take I a 7.2 pH? It, it is a hybrid and it is growing in a 7.8 pH. Okay, and you're not giving it any sulfur nope. or anything? Nope, there's no treatment whatsoever on it. Wow. It looks so healthy. You must be using yeah. Photoshop or something. No, it not at all. It, oh, it almost real. looks like it's one of those ads where, you know, yeah, people right. Photoshopped it and you know, <laughs> one of those uh, garden ads that you get in the mail and that's what it looks like. And it's fabulous. I mean, I, it just blows my mind. Okay. How about rhododendrons? Do you have any of those magical rhododendrons? No. I mean, okay. azalea is in the road, it is related to the rhododendrons, but all of the, um, like the Hel Helsinki uh, rhododendrons, they just don't do well. Yeah. How about a drought tolerant shrub on the south side and a steep slope? Oh my goodness. Um, well, I mean, Aronia would do that. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of, there's a lot. Of yeah, juniper too, huh? Well, juniper would love that. South phasing, that would have that nice sunshine. Yeah, any, any juniper. Okay, how about, uh, how come you didn't mention any maples, Todd? Oh, yeah, I, there's always something. <laughs> that's next year's talk. Yeah, that's next year. <laughs> there's not much new with maples, I guess. Yeah, no, I mean, really there isn't. There's not a whole lot of new maples out there. And, you know, so it's, it's just kind of the normals. Okay, uh, let's see here. Uh, what's the, what, you showed a red bud. What's the hardiest red bud? 
The hardiest redbud is the Northern Herald. There's the other one in our regions, the Minnesota strain out of oh. uh, University of Minnesota. And that one's not nearly as hardy. It's, it's a real hit and miss, even in the zone four, because uh, we've trialed that. Um, but Northern Herald is really solid. And, and I think one of the real main reasons is just the, the leaf foliage, the foliage is just so much thicker and it's so much higher quality. Mm -hmm. Also, the, the big difference between those two is also, you know, not only the hardiness, but it's the growth uh, habit. Northern Herald is a really nice form. Whereas the Minnesota strain, I don't mean to knock, knock it, but it grows really wonky. Hmm. Okay. Uh, let's see here. I'm just going to shift over now to, okay, speaking of wonky, this guy has a birch tree that has trouble growing straight. It's crazy mm. tall, but it doesn't have much width to it. Uh, it has frost in its cultivar name. Probably royal frost. Sounds right. How, about, how can it get it to grow straight? It's in full sunshine. Huh. Well, royal frost, my experience is that it actually does grow wonky. It doesn't really grow straight. Uh, a lot of the specimens I've seen of Royal Frost, it really does kind of go back and forth okay. a little bit. Kind of what it does. Okay, let me, I'm gonna try to stay with cultivars and stuff. Um, Winterberry, Berry Poppins. What do you think about Berry Poppins? Oh, Berry Poppins, that, that's great. Uh, Winterberry uh, Holly is great because uh, it's deciduous for us. It's the only really hardy Holly that we have. Uh, the only thing is you need to have a male. If you don't have a male cultivar, you won't get any of the fruit. Well, there is a Mr. Poppins, right? There is a Mr. Poppins. So, to get, so to get Barry Poppins popping, you need Mr. <laughs> Poppins. <laughs> okay. Very true. And so if you get if you get a Mr. Poppins, it, it needs to be kind of in the proximity. It doesn't have to be exactly in the, you know next to it, but just plant it somewhere kind of behind where it won't really be seen. And Mr. Poppins has no fruit, right? He's Mr. Just, uh, Poppins will have no fruit, so it's not go. going to put on any show, but it needs that pollen yep. or berry poppins. Men are important. Yep, okay. sometimes. Yeah, there you go. Um, how about, you mentioned North Pole Arborvitae, but the yeah. slide showed a different name. Is that possible? Was there another? I don't know. Is North Pole Arborvitae a real, a real cult? Yeah, that, well, that's the trademark. Yeah, well, it's it's probably like uh, like yeah. there's uh, Jeff Red. Oh, uh, what I what I have in here, it's a columnar selection of wintergreen. So that that's okay. where it came from. Okay, got it. Uh, speaking of maples, do any resist sun scald? Probably on the bark is the issue, huh? Or, or both, maybe. Yeah, both. Um, yeah. The key is just protecting them when they're young. Um, you know. The other issue is probably just avoid a Norway. Yeah, avoid Norway. Good. Let's see here. Uh, how do you feel about box elders? I love Especially, box elders. Do you? Like, how about the like, sensation? Is that a favorite I, one of yours? Well, sensation's been a hit and miss for us. Um, you know, we've planted in several places across North Dakota, and it was doing well in Bismarck, but it didn't do well for us at Absaraka. So it's. I think it is still borderline hardy. Okay, we have a... Okay, should we just throw out the other, I don't know, what about a honeyberry recommendation, Todd? Are you a... I don't know, do you know anything every, about honeyberries. I mean, I know what they are, but I don't do anything with them. I don't have any recommendations. Sorry. Yeah, Kathy Wiederholt in Carrington yeah. is our expert. She's going for those uh, Japanese honeyberries now, oh, like uh, Solo and Maxine. So check out Kathy's work online. She's got amazing stuff. And also our old spring fever, you know, we tape everything. So last year, Kathy talked about honeyberry and her the new varieties that she really likes. So you can check it on our website. Same with like Todd's talk tonight. It's going to be recorded. It'll be a bit available in a few days. Okay, how about a wet yard? That's rare in North Dakota. This person, what's a good shrub for a wet yard? Oh, my goodness. Um wet yard shrub uh the the willow uh again aronia yeah, how um, about dogwood dogwood is a great choice lots of different dogwoods okay i think uh you know we have some we have some recommendations like on pruning and stuff but i think you know it's we're gonna stay even we can ask joe those questions there we go 
So uh, let's see. Let me just see if I got a last question here for you. Todd, is there a, you know, how, like, okay, let's just say I saw one of your great shrubs today and I just really love it. How do I find out where to get it? So all these shrubs and trees, if you go to your local garden center, now the likelihood of them being at a box store, it, and what I mean by a box store is your Lowe's and Home Depot's and Walmart's, they're less likely to be found at those because they're, they're using kind of more of the generic type of plants that are going uh, all across the U.S. So you're better off going to a independent local garden center. So just pop in, you know, if there's something here that you uh, have you know, really enjoyed, just tell them what you saw and, and they should be able to get it for you. Is there anything new in Magnolias? I know you like Magnolias, Todd. Uh, nothing really new, hardy for us. We're working towards that, though. How about a pink diamond hydrangea tree? Anything exciting yeah, about the that? Pink, pink diamond hydrangea? Yeah, they'll do all right here. Okay. Um, okay. I know you won't answer this, but what's your favorite tree? That is situational. Depends. Come on, man. Well, it just depends. It's just well, like, I know there was a, there was a question about what a, is the You picked specimen. a wife, you picked a favorite f woman. You, there's always something special about one tree that just knocks your socks I, off. I am a, what's considered a barkophile. I love ornamental bark. So anything that has super cool bark. Okay, sounds good. Um, you know, I think we covered everything. Uh, how about one last thing? Do dogwoods do well in North Dakota? Dogwoods do amazingly in... North Dakota, again, depending, not the flowering dogwood tree, but we have all the shrubs. We also have pagoda dogwood, which also does very well on the north side in the shade. Okay, that sounds good. Todd, thank you. You really brightened up our night with all these new trees and shrubs, and I uh, can't wait to uh, get the growing season started. Thank hey, you, Todd. Uh, all right, thank you. Mm -hmm.